Hello, how's everybody doing? Well, on today, I want to reflect back. I want to re reflect back to something good, to something that warms my heart, that inspires me, that was a blessing to me as I grew up. Being these are my personal notes, and that was that that memory is of the testimony service. Yes, the praise and testimony service back in the day. I, I realized that we today are still testifying, and um, the various church congregations are doing it in different ways. And of course, we should be testifying every day. We overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony. So a testimony should be a common everyday occurrence in some way, form, or fashion. And um, to give God the glory for all that he has done, and we're going to talk about it. My subject for today is the epitome of a testimony. The epitome of a testimony. Stay with me. So back in the day when I grew up, um, they had many times it was on a Friday night, sometimes on a Thursday night, and they would have the praise and testimony service. I loved it. Even as a little child that didn't do too much other than maybe sing a song when they had song program or, or the children's choir or such. Um, one of my favorite parts of the service was the praise and testimony service. And you would have what they call the praise leaders. They would go up front and they would say, um, you know, they would give their testimonies and then they would say praise and testimony service is open to each and every one. And um, there were times they would say either sing a song or testify, you know, for the sake of, the, the, of time and everything. But they would... Um, Ask for different testimonies. Now, um, they would, someone would usually belt out with a song, and they would begin to sing their song, and everybody would join in with them, and, and they would uh, clap. You know, we had the hand clapping, foot stomping churches, and we would play our tambourines, and and we would we were jubilant. We weren't a cold, dry church. We were excited about what God had done for us. Many times people had gone through the week and who knows what they had gone through. But on this Friday night or this Thursday night, they had come to the house of God and there they heard the praises, the singing and the clapping and and um, just the, the joy of the Lord was there and it was a blessing. And even as a little child, I, I, I enjoyed that. I enjoyed that. Now, probably after this was all over, being I remember being a little kid, I was ready to go to sleep. I didn't hear much else. Um, in the early, early days, but I certainly enjoyed the praise and worship, the praise and uh, testimony service. And the testimony service, a lot of times they would start off with, giving honor to God, who's the head of my life. I thank the Lord for saving and filling me with the Holy Ghost and, and that with a mighty burning fire and so on and so forth. And and, you know, I didn't really understand exactly what that meant. And and when we testify, of course, we don't have to over-dramatize it like that. Um, a lot of times, it depends how we give our testimony. A lot of times depends on the setting that we are in. The set now, certainly in holiness, they understand what all that means and, and such. And we have so certain protocols we would go through and what have you, but we would give our testimony. Let me back up and just start by saying that a testimony is an eyewitness account. A testimony is me telling you or my audience or my listener what the Lord has done for me, what God has done for me, not what the devil so much has done for me. I, and if I start talking about what the devil did for me, I need to make sure I end it with how God reversed what the devil was doing or, you know, just brought his plans to not. You know, a testimony service is to magnify, to make big the name of the Lord, to encourage, to inspire, to proclaim what it is that God 
has done or what he is doing. It is very important. And it is, um, a, it's very joyful and, it, and it's um, really edifying when it's done in the right way. And so um, some people would testify about their health. Some people would testify about how, you know, they, they thought they were getting kicked out of their house, but the Lord made a way and they were able to stay or they were able to pay or, or uh, there was money that came in the mail. Some people testified that one of their loved ones had come to the Lord. Um, it was so many different things because there's so many wonderful things about Jesus. As the song says, so many wonderful things about him. And I also, let me put in a few of the songs that they were seeing because um, in between each of these testimonies were songs, were uplifting songs that would glorify and bless the name of the Lord. And I loved them. And a lot of these songs as I grew up, they weren't really difficult, complicated songs. And the, and the churches I grew up in, very seldom, if they ever did, did they ever use a hymnal book. I have belonged to churches where they do use the hymnal book. But these churches, they would say something like, have you tried Jesus? And the congregation would come back with, he's all right. So simple. Have you tried Jesus? He's all right. And, you know, and it was just the idea, so simple. But you would think about, I have tried Jesus I have asked him to be the personal Lord and Savior of my life, and I, he is all right. When they said he's all right, meaning, you know, you know, he's good. He's all right. He, Jesus is so good to us. He's so good. There's another one that says, real, real. Jesus is real to me. Oh, yes. He gave me the victory. So many people doubt him, but I can't live without him. That is why I love him so for he's so real to me. Ah, just thinking about it just gives me joy because he is real. He's so real. He is not a figment of our imagination. He is good. And you know, we couldn't make it without him. I could not make it without the Lord. That's a part of my testimony. I could not make it without the Lord. I am blessed to know Jesus Christ um, it, it, for pardoning of my sins. He saved me. He saved my soul and I thank him for it. So the testimony, you know, uh, growing up, I saw different ways that people would testify. I'm, ta I'm still talking about in the church and I will get to on the outside, but um, inside the four walls of the church there were, or, or the place that we would worship, there were times they would call, call for popcorn testimonies. And a lot of times this was when it was so sometimes our big convocation type um, gatherings, convocation or jurisdictional meeting or district meeting, what we called them. Basically what this was, was more than one church. Everybody would come together. And there were times, you know, in certain parts where they would have what you call the popcorn testimony and the popcorn testimony. And they would let you know up ahead. They would say, all right, we want popcorn testimonies. Meaning, you know, these were testimonies where you just pop up and say, I just thank God for being here. Uh, I just thank God for healing me. I just thank God for that. His name is great. You know, just whatever it is. They had scriptural testimonies and these were like the popcorn testimonies where you would stand up and say a scripture. So if I stood up and say, great is the Lord and greatly to be praised and somebody else stand up and say, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth on him should have, should not perish, but have everlasting life. I mean, and it was, it was enjoyable. And those type of like, especially the scripture testimonies and such, they were good for us at who they called us at that time, the young people, the young folk, because it helped us in, in memorization of Bible scripture. And you know what, what a wonderful thing, how, how wonderful it was to have grown up in a household where I was taught to memorize full scripture. How important. I mean, we live in a day and time where, where, you know, and I know it's possible because our young folk memorize lines upon lines of rap songs that are, are rapping about everything but what's godly. And so they can, they can memorize that. They can memorize it. We can memorize in the schools Shakespeare. We can memorize the word of God. And the word of God has life and life more abundantly in it. And it's such a blessing. So I'm really thankful for my upbringing. But we learned how to testify. There were times, you know, I grew up in a lot of the smaller churches. Um, and uh, smaller, I lived kind of in the country. And, you know, and they would 
teach us. They were teaching us. They were training us up in the way that we should go. And so they were teaching us how to testify. And so there were times when they would say, you know, especially those of us, you know, we, we don't want to stand up. We were watching the adults, but we don't want to stand up and testify because, you know, first of all, we were children and then, you know, we were fighting the spirit of rebelliousness anyway. And so they would say, we want all, before we close out the, pra the praise and testimony service, we want all the young people to stand up and I don't, you're going to testify about something. I don't care if you say, I thank the Lord for being here. So all of us, you know, all of us, we all knew, pretty much knew each other in the church and everything. So all of us, one by one, we'd stand up and we'd say, I thank the Lord for being here. If we were saved, we had accepted Jesus. I thank the Lord for being saved. I thank the Lord for my mommy and my daddy. <laughs> we would testify. They were training us. They were teaching us to stand up and give God the glory. Be thankful. Be grateful. And I'm so thankful for that. So there are different ways to testify. And now, you know, nowadays we do understand uh, because there were um, some people that didn't really know how to testify. Um, many times you'd have people that would testify and they would testify more on the devil's behalf, more on the enemy's behalf than they would on Christ's behalf. I don't think that they, they probably didn't mean any harm, but they, they didn't do it right. And when I mean they did not testify right, testimony in, in, in a Bible believing Holy Ghost field church or, or just in, in, for us as believers, testimony is to glorify our God to give him praise, to give him worship, to tell of his goodness, to say what it is he has done for us, uh, how he has delivered us, how he has healed us, how he has set us free, how he has made a way out of no way, how he blocked what the enemy was trying to do, how he protected us, um, how he kept us in the storm. He was a shelter in, in the time of a storm. He put food on our table and clothes on our back and so on and so forth. And so that's what it's for. And to give God the glory. No flesh shall glory in his sight. To give God the glory for the things he has done. And so sometimes you would have somebody that would stand up and they were talking about, you know, I I just, I've been aching in my knee and, and my knee just been aching. And I've been aching in my knee and my knee's just been aching. And you know, and you know, I just don't think I'll ever get better. And um, and you know, and you know that old devil, he just so busy, he just so busy that old devil. And you know, and I I said that you know, and I don't mean uh, you know, I said that in a mocking manner. And uh, and uh, Lord forgive me, but many of you you have saw you have heard testimonies like that, and that is not how we should testify. Um, if we start off talking about the challenges, the negativities, what happened to us, then certainly before we sit down, before we end that testimony, we should say what the Lord has done, how the Lord turned it around. Late in the midnight hour, God turned it around. You know, I started off aching in my knee, and I've been having a problem with that knee for years. But you know what? I remember I, I the Bible says that is there any sick among you to go and to the elders of the church and let them pray for you. And I did that, and I believed God, and, and, the, and the elders, they believed God, and together we joined our faith. And do you not know that the Lord touched my knees, and my knees feel better today. They feel much better today, and I give God. God praise or you know God heals in so many different ways and since I have been having some problems with my knees I just thank God for the medical profession you know because God has enabled the doctors to learn um, a lot of the wisdom all the wisdom that they have and such and when I went and you know and and uh, God took me on through the surgery and God blessed and you know I'm walking so much better I am just thankful that I live in a day and time where they have medical professionals and where they have so many different inventions and, and innovations to help us to feel better. So I give God all the glory, honor, and praise for feeling better and giving me the courage and giving me such a great medical team. I mean, there's always a way. Um, 
uh, to, to testify to God's glory and God's honor because anything and everything good, it does come from the Lord. Oh yes, it comes from the Lord and we are thankful for the things that he has done. So many times uh, I have had opportunity to testify in the supermarket. I've been there and I'm a chatty person. I'm, you know, I'm a friendly person. And sometimes I've gotten into conversation with somebody or maybe it's somebody I, I know and haven't seen in a while. Maybe it's somebody I don't know. But like sometimes I'll be talking to somebody and say, I haven't seen you in a while. You've been doing okay? Well, uh, I just lost this person in my family and it's really kind of bothered me and so on and so forth. Well, right there, that gives me an opportunity to, to um, encourage that person or to tell of God's goodness or to or to or to pray for her or to or there are times I've met people they have lost a child like I had lost a child and that would give me an opportunity to to very compassionately share my testimony and how one day and how I understand that it's a hard thing to get through and not that I understand exactly how they feel but I understand from the pain I went through, how it felt, and, and to pray for them and such. I mean, it's so many different ways that we can testify about. God is just so good, and we should be open to it. We can testify on our job. Now, we do our jobs, We do, and depending on where you work and stuff, you know, you, you do things decently and in order. But there are times when you get in a private conversation with another adult, and they are talking to you about something, and it, it'll open up an opportunity for you to share your your testimony because so many times the longer we live saved people can't really without holy ghost discernment they can't really look back and say see where we came from they can't really see every testimony because maybe we carry a spirit of joy on us maybe we're smiling a lot and and maybe they don't hear us complain too much and such and so they don't know they think that we got it all going on and we ain't never had a problem in our life and that is just not the truth and we have to tell them you you know, yes, God has been good, and it's in the Lord that I live, move, and have our be my being. And and without the Lord, I couldn't make it. I just could not make it. Let me tell you about some of the things that God has done for me. I mean, testifying, testifying is such a blessing. Hallelujah, Hallelujah, Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank. So it is an eyewitness account. I want to end. Um, with a testimony that I heard probably in one of my earliest memories. I know I had to be somewhere between the age of four and six, and I'm really thinking it's closer to four years old. Um, this was in California. Uh, I grew up in the San Joaquin Valley um, part of, of California. And this was um, at my grandfather's church, my late grandfather's church on my father's side. And, um, you know, grew up, fond memories of just growing up in and around the church. And there was a lady, and her name was Mother Whitmore. Whitmore. Now, um, they all said Mother Whitmore, <laughs> but I believe her name was Mother Whitmore. And she was an elderly lady. Um, she had to be between 70 and 80 years old. Um, I was young, so everybody was seemed so much more older. But she was an elderly lady. And I, I remember her voice uh, was light and frail sounding in a sense. But I remember when she testified that she was putting lots of emphasis in her voice, even though her voice sounded frail. And she stood up. And, you know, and I was watching her and listening to her. And she's in the, the main part I remember, as my memory serves me from that long ago, the main part I remember was her saying, when I was a young woman, I served the Lord. I served the Lord when I was a young woman. And now that I'm an old woman, basically she was saying, or what I remember, basically she was saying, I don't have any regrets. Or that, in other words, she was saying, I'm an old woman now and I can't do like I used to do. But when I was a young woman, when she was young and she was in her strength, she went forth and she served the Lord with all her might, you know. And when she gave this testimony, I don't, for some reason, out of, especially being that young, out of everything that went on, 
I remember this woman, this senior woman of God testifying. And I remember that specific phrase, when I was a young woman, I served the Lord. And I remember this, just the emphasis on what she was saying. And now that I'm an old woman, and I remember as a little girl, just sitting there, just watching, just listening. I remember thinking to myself, huh, when I'm a young woman, I'm going to serve the Lord too. <laughs> um, I, as I grew up and got older and older, I started, you know, to really put together what I had heard and what it meant and everything. And, and it's always been at the back of my mind. It was a testimony. This woman who has been gone to be with the Lord for long years, years, years. And, but at the same time, her testimony, I could still hear her testimony in my mind. She, her testimony affected a little girl that now I do love the Lord. Now I'm a grown woman. I'm a mother, um, have grown children now, and I'm over 45 years old. And I still remember that testimony and it still inspires me. It inspires me that with everything I got to give God all of that I can to serve him, to serve him with gladness as, as well to, um, to, to live for him while I have, while the blood is running warm in my veins and I have activities of my limbs, while I could open up my mouth and testify of his goodness and, and such to magnify his name that while I can still praise him in the dance and clap my hands and pat my feet and beat my tambourine and such that I should do so and do it while I can, while I'm, you know, I'm not a youth like I was, you know, not like a four or five year old youth, but I'm a youth to somebody. <laughs> I'm God's youth, but I can praise him. But I want to encourage each and every one of you to testify, testify, tell of God's goodness. If you're in a congregation where they have testimony service, don't miss your opportunity. It doesn't have to be like anybody else's. Just tell of God's goodness. Just say something that God did for you. And don't make it, you know, two hours long because like they say, you know, I he's done so much for me. I just can't tell it all. You can't tell it all. Can't tell it all. And if they don't, if they still if they only have the praise and worship, they just sing a few songs and and such, okay, that's fine. You know, ask God, give me, give me who to testify to. God will open up doors for you to testify. Please testify to the glory honor God. It's it's for your own benefit as well because we overcome by our testimony and the blood of the Lamb. God bless you. Mm -hmm.